There are a lot of little secrets in New World that if you know them can greatly increase your enjoyment of the game. Let's jump into my top 10 things I wish I knew before starting New World. If you have other tips you would like to add, leave them in the comments below. The first recommendation I would give is to just follow the main story when you're trying to level. Instead of trying to look for the most efficient way to level, notice that the main story quest line gives a substantial more amount of experience than most of the other side quests that you are going to interact with. There are a few exceptions, and we'll cover one of them in a little bit later. But for the most part, try to stick to the main story quest whenever you first start playing the game. If you are a returning player and you're looking for an expedited way to level, instead of just following the main story quest, it would probably be best to spend most of your time running expeditions and eventually find your way into the Elysian Wilds so that you can end out the campaign there. The experience gain in the Elysian Wilds is really good. Tip number two is in your crafting station, and when you come in to craft a specific item, whenever you click on each of the things that are required, make sure you uncheck the owned box, and it will show you more of the crafting ingredients. Sometimes, for instance, when you come here and I try to craft a star metal item, I may not have a star metal ingot, but I might have azurite chunks, and I can use that in place of the star metal ingot to craft this item. You can find this for most of the other ingredients as well. When you're traveling in the game, it's a good idea to stick to the roads so you can benefit from the increased movement speed while you are on the road. Go ahead and mount up to make it even faster. As you progress through the game, you will get access to a variety of different expeditions. Around each of these expeditions is usually a quest giver that will have a repeatable quest so that you can repeat these expeditions and complete a quest every time. When you're leveling, if you're behind, it might be a good idea to go back to some of these older expeditions and complete the repeatable quests so you can get more experience and level up. Whenever you hit level 17 and you're able to complete your faction quest line, be sure to visit with your faction giver every day because of the first three missions that you turn in every day will provide you with additional experience and rewards. In addition to the bonus you get for your first three factions, you do get a well-rested bonus, and it would be a good idea to stack these two together. If you're having a difficult time either knowing what to do or finding a group for certain things, try checking your activities finder. By going into this selection, you can choose different things to do and if you want to find an expedition, you can select different expeditions that you would like to do and then queue for those expeditions. It might take a little bit of time to find a group, but you can always queue for these expeditions while you do other things. Additionally, you get three daily bonuses every day to do a random expedition. It's greatly advised that you do this three times a day. Playing music gives you a wide variety of different buffs it's a good idea to go ahead and play your instrument before you go out on an adventure doing certain things and play the song that goes along with that particular activity so you can benefit more from that activity. Don't sleep on music. It's a good late game thing to do. If you found the video helpful so far, I would greatly appreciate a like. It helps me see what kind of videos you guys want me to make. Also, let me know down below in the comments which tip you found the most useful. As always, hit the subscribe button on your way back up. My next tip is to not try to do everything. Instead of trying to max out all of your different trade skills, choose a few different trade skills that you really enjoy and concentrate on doing those things. For this character, I really enjoyed chopping down trees, smelting different ores, and making a variety of different tools. So I concentrated on those three skills and didn't do much of anything with the other ones. If you want to eventually max out all the trade skills, that's a wonderful thing to do, but it's very costly and time intensive to try and do all of them. Instead, focus on one or two, and when you have them under control, move over to the next one. My next tip is about foods and make sure that you're going through and equipping the foods that provides you with the most benefit. These foods, when you use them while going into certain activities, can change the game on whether you are able to complete this activity or whether you struggle. It's always good to have a constitution booster 
and then add another one for your damage booster. Pop these anytime you are about to go into some harder content. My last tip is if you are cautious as a PC player about returning to the game because you don't feel like you want to spend $30 for the DLC if you don't own it, don't feel that you need to buy the DLC. For the most part, you can join the game and enjoy most of the upgraded content without the Angry Earth DLC. The few major things that you will miss out on is at level 20, you will not be able to get your mount. And then once you hit level 60, you will not be able to continue your adventure into the Elysian Wilds. Your gear score level will also be lower and you won't be able to equip certain gear that you get if its gear score is too high. And that's my 10 things I wish I knew before starting New World. I hope you guys found this useful. And if you enjoyed it, check out some of my other videos in the New World playlist. Definitely check out my getting started guide if you are a new player. I hope to see you guys in Eternum.